So we see we start at the top, and it's moving around this way. So it's we're measuring its vertical distance from the center, from this axle right here. So it moves down, now it's level, now it's below it, now it's down here. So you're seeing those distances mapped out on a graph. And as it spins around and around and around, it'll be down here and it'll move back up to being level with the axle and then up here and then down here. And so going around and around and around and over time we're seeing where it is vertically above or below the axis, the, the axle there. Or the, uh, yeah, above the axle. So we're supposed to write an equation and uh, I'll get too distracted by that. Okay, so which graph does this look like a sine or a cosine? Why is that? Because it starts at the origin. Off the origin. Off the origin. So, yeah, when we look at the unit circle right here at zero radians, the, the cosine is one, right? Is its maximum value. And then it comes down as we go around circle. So let's start out with a cosine of something. And we'll figure out, did we see a amplitude change, a period change, um, a horizontal shift, any of those things. And then we'll fill in as needed. Okay. Um, so what do you think? Uh, the amplitude of the normal cosine wave without anything done to it is how big? One. Standard is one. What is the amplitude of this wave? So what can we do to our equation so that we make sure that the amplitude is 3.75? 3.75 right there. What other kind of change have we seen? Have we seen a horizontal, vertical shift, period change? Period change. Period change. Period change. Anything else? No. Nope. So we just need to figure out what B is. That. What's B related to? Well, we know it's a period, right? What did you, you said something? The formula for period. Formula for the period is? Two pi over B, right? Two pi over B. Do you know what the period is? Yeah. 0 0.01. 0.01. From here to there, I can tell you it's 0 0.01. So in 0 0.01, or hundredth of a second, it's gone from the top all the way back to the top again. Point zero one is the period. That's equal to two pi over b, multiplied by b on both sides, so we cancel out that b. Point oh one b equals two pi. So b equals two pi over point zero one. You get pi in a decimal in a fraction at that point. Maybe it's best to just go ahead and find a decimal approximation. So what is the, the decimal approximation of 2 pi over 0 0.01? 628.32. Oh. oh. Alternatively, you could multiply it by uh, 100. What? You could alternatively you could multiply oh. by 100. Yes, divide by 100. Yes. Alternative multiply by 100. Yeah. So yeah, what do we see? Six, 3.14 is pi. 6.28 is two times pi. Times 100 moves the decimal place over two. 6.28 moves the decimal place over two. Times. One thing tells me that 200 pi that they have. Is oh, 200 pi. Let me just see what 200 pi is. So B is 628.32. So the final version in red. I'll write it up here. Y equals. 3.75 times the cosine of 628.32. Oh, X. X. That's pretty important. Let's see if that's what I got. 200 pi, that's what they have. That's the same thing. That's, that's what we found. 200 pi is more exact. Is that any 
mean if Tyria is 200 times bigger than us? Um, 200, 500. It's not bigger. It's 200, it's 100, wait. It's 200 pi times smaller. It goes by, like 200 pi of them will go by in an island in that period. Yeah. Group. expect to happen with this negative input? Flip it over, vertical flip, but it doesn't change the amplitude. The amplitude's the same. It just means that's going to go down before it goes up. That's right. So I'll start here, go down, instead of going up. It's the sine wave, it's the opposite of what the sine wave does. So it's a secant wave. sure why that goes to the right 3 pi over 2. We did go into quite some detail as to why that happens. And I think maybe in, in period 6, it wouldn't even a little better. So maybe watch the period 6 lecture and see why that moves to the right uh, 3 pi over 2. But basically, these x's need to be 3 pi over 2 bigger than normal. So when we subtract 3 pi over 2, we're back to what we, what we like. Yeah, we went over that. Yeah. But in period 6, it went to I think I did a better job there. So take a look at that. Yeah. Or this period's uh, lecture video explains why that moves to the right through pi over two and not to the left. So if we can incorporate all those things, the period is the same. It's still two pi. Um, let's see. First, we'll show that it moved up to. Its amplitude is still one, so it goes up from two to three down from 2 to 1. We just need to make sure that when we graph it, we graph it like this, because that negative in front. So if we were to just mark this out like it was normal, like we haven't shifted it yet, we can find where all of these points are and shift them to the right 3 pi over 2. This is pi over 2, uh, pi, 2 pi over 2, and 2 pi. We're going to shift everything to the right 3 pi over 2. That starts at 0, so that's going to move over to 3 pi over 2. This is a lot harder than it is. Yeah, it's much harder. But if you didn't, weren't able to do that on your paper, then, then you can draw this one and then draw yours and see what it takes. You know, if I move everything over 3 pi over 2, where are all these points now? The easiest one would be 0. If we take 0 and add 3, over, 3 pi over 2, then that'll be a 3 pi over 2. And we'll take this point that was at pi over 2 and add 3 pi over 2 to it. That's going to be 
four pi over two, or two pi. That's already marked. Start at pi over one and add pi over two. It's going to be uh, it's going to be pi plus three pi over two. Five pi over two. We get a common denominator. This guy right here is at 5 pi over 2. Okay, where is this? Well, it started here at 3 pi over 2, and we add 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 is 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi. Simplify that. Where is this? Well, it started life here. 2 pi over 2. What's that? No. 7 pi over 2. Why isn't it? If it's 3 pi not over 2 and 5 pi over 2, wouldn't that be 8 pi? 8 pi over 2? No. Pa 2 pi plus 3 pi over 2. 2 pi oh, no. plus 3 pi over 2. This is 6, or it's, uh, it's 4 pi over 2. Yeah. Oh, I was adding the wrong one. Um, I think the answer that you had like, for checking that the quadratic answer was wrong. Was okay, let's take a look. Thirty-one. It's not wrong. It's just that we only have drawn this part of it and that and that over there. If we continue it back this direction, oh, okay. that. <coughs> like this, and this will be that there. This will wind up there. This Considering, but uh, it's a little different. What about it? What makes what's different because of that negative three? The amplitude is flipped over. It's not the inverse. I mean, the inverse is a totally different animal, but it is flipped over. Okay. Um, so that negative three will we'll flip it over, but also because of the three, it will do what else? The amplitude will be. Amplitude will be three instead of just one. It'll come down like this. Like that. That's y equals negative three sine x. Nothing else has been done, so that's what negative three sine x would look like. What about this four? What does this four do? It means three and four times bigger. Well, it's smaller. Smaller. Two pi over four. Um, let's see. Let's see. 
So that makes the period pi over 2 rather than pi. 2 pi, excuse me. Pi over 2 rather than 2 pi. So pi over 2 is right there. It's going to go like this, and like this, and like this. A really short space. So let's make it look pretty nice. Okay? So the period should be pi over 2. The amplitude should be 3. It should be an upside down. All I'm doing with this graph as opposed to this one is labeling it and uh, you know stretching the space out a little bit so it doesn't look so squished. If it looks squished, that's fine. You can have it be squished. It doesn't matter. Um, but halfway, we should see it coming from down here up to there. It should be crossing over. At what what x value is this? That's pi over two. This is pi over four. Pi over four. <coughs> Which makes this what? Pi over eight. That's half of that. Okay, so every time you know the period, this is a fourth. This is another fourth. This is another fourth. This is three fourths of the period. Okay, three fourths of that would be three of the pi over eight. Start here, go down here, up through here, up to the max at 3 pi over 8, and back down in the midline. There is one period. If I were to mark out another period, where would it be? Or the end of that second period? Because pi is pi. Period is pi over 2. Another pi over 2 is pi. All right, so that's like a 14.1 kind of a thing, amplitude and period change. I thought you were going to say a 14.1. No. No, we're not 14. There's anything in there. Um, all right, any questions on that? Make sure we get the amplitude and the period marked off. And uh, if you flip it over, okay. Is this a sufficient unicorn? So if you, um, yes. So if you, uh, like, well, all the work is like that, but it's just wrong, it's all wrong. Good to actually react. Good honest effort. Three out of four. You screw normal sign. Yeah. 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 Considering the uh, cosine wave, which looks like this normally. What do you mean normally? Do you mean make cosine wave not look like that? Or about to. No, I mean like, like, like. So, so just y equals the cosine of x just looks like that. It's at 2 pi there. Three, two pi. Okay, but what are we changing with these different <laughs> things? If this is like plus 2, what does the plus 2 do to the graph? Moves it up to 2. So this would be 1. We know that the top of the cosine wave is at 1. That's at 2. So the midline is at 2. Okay, so it would look more like this with a plus 2. This is just y equals cosine x plus 2. We got that minus pi. What does the minus pi do? Moves it to the right pi. Moves it to the right pi. Well, that's, this is right here. This is pi. So if we move the left side of it over to pi. Moves up two, but our midline at two. Period hasn't changed, just moves to the right pi. So instead of being at zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, or two pi, you're gonna move all these points to the right at the amount of pi. So this point, that, we'll put a little, uh, yeah. This 
guy that was at zero, we move it over. If we move this over pi, where will it be? Over pi. Right at pi. We'll go with this guy who starts his life at pi over two. And we add pi to pi over two. Pi over two plus pi. Three pi over two. So right over three pi over two, that's where we come down and cross the midline. This, we're going to move this guy over pi. Well, that's pi plus pi. It's 2 pi. Okay. This one's going to move it. We're moving this, the point on this graph, it's right here, over pi. 3 pi over 2 plus pi. So let's find out. 3 pi over 2 plus pi. We need a common denominator, so we need 2 pi over 2. So 5 pi, 5 pi over 2. We're moving this guy over here. He's now 5 pi over 2. And lastly, this point we're moving over pi. That's 2 pi. We move that over pi. Where's that? 3 pi. 3 pi. 2 pi plus pi is 3 pi. And there's our graph. Back and cross there. And back across there. Should have happened, you didn't follow what I was saying. Anything? Yeah, I mean, this period starts at pi, but then I just traced it back, and these, these waves go on forever to the right and to the left, right? I just went ahead and went back to the y axis. Not too bad. It was a good time. So we have this sine wave starts out looking like that. But everything is changing. The period's going to change. It's going to shift up. It's going to shift left. It's going to get a different amplitude. Um, let's incorporate one of these changes. And the thing that I'll say is you pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, yeah, pretty much in any order. But I would leave the horizontal shift to the last. Let's leave the horizontal shift to the very last thing that you do. A lot of stuff is going on, and if you if you do that before you basically if you do that before you do the period change, you can get some real funky results. Why? It's just happening. Why? Because it's how we'll explain. Why? Shh. Okay. What else? Or not what else? But what what can we start by doing? Amplitude. Amplitude. Let's change the amplitude. I have an amplitude of two. This is an amplitude of 1, amplitude of 2. So the graph should be looking like that. So we can come check, did that. If we get all the work done, can we be, listen to the unicorn song? It's going to be difficult to do if you keep asking questions. Well, I'll make this What's next? Um, it would be a. Uh, yeah, What's this doing? It's uh, moving to the right. No, no, it's moving it up here and down to shift. Down three. Yeah. Keep getting that and then up with here. Mix it up. One, two, and three. So the midline is now down here at three. Right there. Down three. Now what? That's, if the shift to the left is going to be the last thing, what is the thing we haven't done yet? Period. 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 Period.
period equals 2 pi over b. So period equals 2 pi over 4. Period equals pi over 2. So just kind of like the thing and scrunch it. Okay? And scrunch it down. So it is pi over 2, which is right there. And lastly, Things happen horizontal. horizontal to the left, pi over 3. That part's going to be a little bit more involved. It's the left pi over 3 is this pi over 3. Something like that. We'll get more exact here when we draw the, the larger version of it. But in our minds, we should be able to envision. So we're going to move it down, and we're going to move this up so that we can work down here. Moves it down three. So that's the midline. This amplitude is two, so we got that. We'll go down here to negative five. This is negative one, so we're between negative one and negative five. Let's draw it so it has a period, first a period of pi over two, and then we'll move it to the left pi over three. Pi over two, pi over four. What is this? Pi over eight. Eight. I had written that right to start with. Three pi over eight. So before the shift, it looks like this. Uh, it's the sine wave, so it's going to go up. Maximum, I'm sorry, here go to the maximum, across the midline, down to the minimum, up to the midline again. I'm going to have to shift it to the left, pi over 3. So we're going to have some funky common denominators and stuff. I'm trying to figure out where all this stuff goes. If you try it, it doesn't look perfect, it looks scale, it's weird, it's off. That's all right. Just make sure you label it correctly. Label where these five points are. It's going to move to the left, pi over 3. I don't know, that's going to be, I don't know exactly where that's going to put it, because that's, in terms of pi over 8, that's kind of uh, weird. Let's see, that's. Uh, it's divided into 24. So that's. Uh, well, let's figure it out. Let's start with this one that's at 0, and move it to the left. Pi over 3. Is this guy that was at 0? Move it to the left. Pi over 3. 0 minus pi over 3. Negative pi over 3. Uh, I'm starting with, or going on to. one that was at pi over 8 over pi over 3. We'll start with pi over 8 minus pi over 3. What do we need to get? What? Pi over. Oh, you got to change it to 24 squared. 24 is common denominator. So we've got 3 pi over 24 minus 8 pi over 24 multiplied by 3 over 3 multiplied by 8 over 8 negative 5 pi over 24. So this is negative 5 pi over 24. Now well, we move this guy over, this guy over, now we're going to move this one over. Start at pi over 4, move it to the left pi over 3, Let's see where that winds up. Pi over 4, minus pi over 3. Common denominator of 12. 3 pi over 12. Minus 4 pi over 12. 7 pi over 12. No, it's 3. 
minus 4. Oh, so pi. Negative pi over 12. Started out at three pi over eight, moved over through pi over three. Minus, or wait, three pi over eight minus <coughs> pi over three. We need a common denominator of twenty-four again. We'll multiply this by three over three, so we got nine pi over twenty-four. Multiply this by eight over eight. That's minus eight pi over twenty-four. So pi over 24. I guess this is supposed to be pi over 24. So if this is pi over 12, this should be closer to the, the y-axis than it looks. But like I said, just make sure you label it correctly. It doesn't really matter if it looks correct, but that you just label it correctly. You move this guy over. Pi over 2, move it to the left, pi over 3. Two minus pi over three. What's our common denominator? Hey, there's a baby spider on my desk. Good. What's the common denominator? Six. Six. Okay, multiply this by three over three. Three pi over six minus two pi over six. Pi over six. Let's take the test. Right now. Oh, that was scary. No, what was scary? Right now? Board? Nah, all no, let's take the scary. entire chapter test. What was scary about it? Just uh, doing all the subtracting and stuff like that. It's like so much math. Well, if we were in an English class, that might be a scary proposition. Yeah, but this is math, math class. And by math, I mean algebra. By algebra, I mean math. Sophia Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, I had changed my mind. Gordon should. Okay. <laughs> I'm alright. Yeah. I scare you. I said I'm alright with that. <laughs> so I agree with that. You don't scare me. So you are you're alright with me thinking I'm scared. <laughs> it's okay. I think Brandon's scary. I know Brandon could beat me to a pulp. But you're right, I could beat Tyler to a pulp. He has a right. It's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, any questions? Go play against his how on Billy the Dragon. That was strange, strange mind, Gordon. <laughs> then, how many points is this quiz worth? Scored out of 12, two points on every problem for writing it down. Three for trying, and four for getting it right. That figuring out what the horizontal is and what the which equation we want to use, we'll leave that up to you for a second to think about that. Look at that and think about what how how much of a horizontal shift in which direction it's going. Shape, this graph that I've drawn, does it look familiar? Mm -hmm. What does it look like? Cosine. If you think it looks like cosine, why is that? Because the amplitude is near zero. So the very the maximum is close to being on the y-axis, so you can think of it like a cosine wave? Yeah. That's shifted to the right by how much? Pi over eight. Pi over eight. <laughs> so I guess I shouldn't put a sign on that yet. Cosine wave, and what do we put here so that we have a horizontal shift to the right? Pi over 8. Minus pi over 8.
Gordon found it in sine form, it's rather than the cosine, um, which is fun to do. Uh, and this is, by the way, not the only way to look at it. I mean, we could think about this as being the point shifted over to the right, however much that is. Okay, that could be instead of pi over eight, it could be that amount. Uh, so like seven, it would be minus seventeen pi over eight. Or you can just you know, lots of different values could be used here. It's up to you. But pi over eight definitely is the easiest one. Um, what about if we do the sine? Well, it would still be. I guess we'll have to decide here. Sine of still four x. Still the board, the vertical shift would be the same. If you think about at this right here, it's like the point that used to be over here on the midline and got shifted to the right. So minus three. So it's goes down first, so it's a negative. Negative three times the sine. Okay. And what's that horizontal shift gonna be? Well, this is pi over eight. This is three pi over eight. So where would this be? Pi over four. Pi over four, two pi over eight? Pi over four? Okay. So minus pi over four. That can work too. Or an infinite number of other possibilities. This is where math is fun, isn't it? Uh, sure. Oh, well. I think it's all fun. That's in the eye of the beholder. Um, one more little thing, if we look at, at this guy right here, this period equals 2 pi over b. If we solve for b, we can get b equals 2 pi over p. So like, rather than having to go through all this, we can just plug p in there and do the math. There's b. My calculator. B is 2 pi over B, A is max plus min over 2, A is max minus min over 2, and then the horizontal shift in, and the cosine of the sine, that's up to you. I mean, what does it look like to you? Does it look like a cosine wave that got moved? Does it look like a sine wave that got moved? Is that sine wave or cosine wave upside down? Should there be a negative in front? Infinite number of possibilities. Absolutely. Can you shoot that on that one? What's that? Oh, I, I thought you were changing it. Not no. changing it, yeah. I'm going to leave it up. And um, I'm going to give you a couple of points, a maximum and a minimum. And you take a shot at it. Is that a P? Is what? Is it uh, this? B? Is that P for P? Uh, P and B. Okay. Does the pass score get bonus points? No, I don't want anyone to be rushing themselves. That's more fun that way. Then race your heart out. Uh, so I'm just going to write that problem right here so you can reference all of this kind of word racing. So say the max is minimum is at 3 pi common neighbors. So the big answer is for max. Yeah. Okay.
Which gives us zero, so k is non-existent. I can get rid of that. Thing. Wait. 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 Six plus six divided by two is zero. Maybe you should just keep working. I thought you got this right. I did get this right, but I did it in my head, and I'm having to show my work. Okay, is the maximum plus the minimum over two? The maximum is six. Oh, it's and plus. Negative six plus a negative. Yeah. So they cancel each other out. So k is zero, but that's if you look at those two points, think about where they are. That's not surprising, right? One is six. And what's negative six, but they're evenly above the x-axis, above and below the x-axis. Yeah. And the x-axis would be the midline. So we have no vertical shift. Zero. Good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going back to ring. Is that right? Yes. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So since the it's at zero and it goes up to six, we can assume that the amplitude is six. That in. And now we can figure out the period because um, since we're starting at the origin, because yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and pi. That's up here, 2 pi, and 3 pi is way down here. What? You just mark negative 5, not negative 3. Come on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ah, uh, scorch. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, it's 3 pi. So, since there's 4 pi in one period before we actually come back to the, where we started from. Sure, Robert. One. Starts at pi. If it starts at pi, why are we assuming that it's starting at pi? Then it's starting up here. We can start it here. The maximum is at pi. Yeah. But si signing wise, we can start it at the. Yes, but. And then come back up here, which is at 5 pi. But if we start here, then, then how do you know that it goes through? What is, what is it? Do you just add one here? Yeah, it doesn't. Because it just comes through 2 pi back down to 3 pi. Then that's 2 pi to go down to there. Which means it has in 6, it has to go through pi. Because, because 6, like, 
it's, it's, it's going 12, right? It's going 12. It's going 12. It's going 12. Means it's just six. Which means that it's coming down six. It has to be three or more. So, um, hey, 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 I'm teaching this class with Stuart's guidance. So we have to start at the origin. Well, we don't have to. We can start anywhere we want. Stuart thinks we should start at six pi. So, since there's one pi between each segment -y thingy, we can assume that it goes like that, and then like wiggles off into the abyss. But, um, so, we know that there's four pi in this period, which is two times what it normally is. So the period has to be one half. Okay. Which means that this stuff doesn't exist either. So. I think you're just teaching a bad habit. There. Good. Hey, Cam. Hello. Oh, you're inside oh, of the room. May I put these into the hands of your students? No. You can put them on a table. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 you're Read ready. Read out, everybody. Just leave them right there on the table. That's why I did. Good you're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a few seconds here. 14.3. We're gonna have to. Fourteen point three. We use these identities to simplify trigonometric expressions. Okay. Check online. I will have this explained. I'll have examples of each of the homework problems. Okay. So we'll go through each homework problem with you. It's using stuff that you already know to simplify expressions. Okay? Watch that video and we will fully explain what I'm talking about. So we're doing 14 point For next time, we should talk less during class about things that aren't about. So we're doing 14 